In our class this week, we're going to talk about hyperlipidemia. Coronary heart disease is the cause of about half of all deaths in the United States. The incidence of coronary heart disease is correlated with elevated level of low density lipoprotein cholesterol and triacylglycerol and with low levels of high density lipoprotein cholesterol. Other risk factors for coronary heart disease include cigarette smoking, hypertension, obesity, and diabetes. Cholesterol level may be elevated as a result of an individual lifestyle, for example, by lack of exercise and consumption of a diet containing excess saturated fatty acid. Hyperlipidemia can also result from single inherited gene defect in lipoprotein metabolism or more commonly from a combination of genetic and lifestyle factors. Appropriate lifestyle changes in combination with drug therapy can lead to a decline in the progression of coronary plaque, regression of pre-existing lesions, and reduction in mortality due to coronary heart disease by 30 to 40 percent. This figure illustrates the normal metabolism of serum lipoproteins and the characteristics of major genetic hyperlipidemias. Plasma lipids consist mostly of lipoprotein, which are spherical macromolecule complexes of lipids and specific proteins, apolipoproteins. The clinically important lipoproteins listed in decreasing order of atherogenicity are LDL, VLDL, and chylomicrons, and HDL. The occurrence of coronary heart disease is possibly associated with high level, high total cholesterol, and even more strongly uh, with elevated LDL cholesterol in the blood. In contrast to LDL cholesterol, high level of HDL cholesterol have been associated with a decreased risk for heart disease. Reduction of LDL level is the primary goal of cholesterol lowering therapy. This figure shows the current goal in treatment of hyperlipidemia. Recommendations for reduction of LDL cholesterol to specific target levels are influenced by coexistence of coronary heart disease and a number of other cardiac risk factors. The higher the overall risk of heart disease, the more aggressive the recommended LDL lowering therapy. In patients with moderate hyperlipidemia, lifestyle changes such as diet, exercise, and weight reduction can lead to modest decreases in LDL levels and increases in HDL levels. However, most patients are unwilling to modify their lifestyle sufficiently to achieve LDL treatment goals and drug therapy may be required. Patients with LDL level higher than 160 mg per deciliter and with one other major risk factor such as hypertension, diabetes, smoking, or family history of early coronary heart disease are candidates for drug therapy. Elevated triacylglycerol or triglyceride level are independently associated with increased risk of coronary heart disease. Diet and exercise are the primary modes of treating hypertriacylglycerolemia. If indicated, niacin and fibric acid derivatives are the most efficacious in lowering triacylglycerol level. Triacylglycerol reduction is a secondary benefit of statin drugs, the primary benefit being LDL cholesterol reduction. Antihyperlipidemic drug target the problem of elevated serum lipids with complementary strategies. Some of these agents decrease production of lipoprotein carriers of cholesterol and triglyceride, whereas others increase the degradation of lipoprotein. Still others decrease cholesterol absorption or directly increase cholesterol removal from the body. This drug may be used singly or in combination. 3-hydroxy-3-methylglutaryl-HMG-CoA reductase inhibitor, commonly known as statins, lower elevated LDL cholesterol level resulting in a substantial reduction in coronary events and death from coronary heart disease. 
This group of anti-hyperlipidemic agents inhibit the first committed enzymatic step of cholesterol synthesis, and they are the first line and more effective treatment for patients with elevated LDL cholesterol. Therapeutic benefits include plaque stabilization, improvement of coronary endothelial function, inhibition of platelet thrombus formation, and anti-inflammatory activity. Inhibition of HMA co HMG CoA reductase, lovastatin, simvastatin, bravastatin, artovastatin, and rosuvastatin are analogs of HMG, the precursor of cholesterol. Lovastatin and simvastatin are lactones that are hydrolyzed to active drug. Bravastatin and fluvastatin are active as such. Because of their strong affinity for enzyme, all compete effectively to inhibit HMG-CoA reductase, the rate limiting step in cholesterol synthesis. By inhibiting the novel cholesterol synthesis, they deplete the intracellular supply of cholesterol. Pitavastatin, rosuvastatin, and atovastatin are the most potent LDL cholesterol lowering statin drugs, followed by simvastatin, bravastatin, and then lovastatin. These drugs are effective in lowering plasma cholesterol level in all types of hyperlipidemia. It should be noted that in spite of the protection afforded by cholesterol lowering, about one-fourth of the patients treated with these drugs still present with coronary events. Thus, additional strategies such as diet, exercise, and additional agents may be warranted. It is not worthy doing the five-year trial of simvastatin and lovastatin only a few adverse effects related to liver and muscle function were reported. Myopathy and rhabdomyolysis, disintegration and dissolution of muscle have been reported only rarely. In most of these cases, patients usually suffer from renal insufficiency or were taking drugs such as cyclosporin, itraconazole, erythromycin, gemfibrozil, or niacin. Plasma creatine kinase level should be determined regularly. These drugs are contraindicated during pregnancy and in nursing mothers. They should not be used in children or teenagers. Niacin can reduce low-density lipoprotein or bad cholesterol level by 10 to 20 percent and is the most effective agent for increasing HDL level. Niacin can be used in combination with statins and a fixed dose combination with low vast statin and long acting niacin is available. At gram doses, niacin strongly inhibit lipolysis in adipose tissue, the primary producer of circulating free fatty acids. Plasma level of cholesterol in hyperlipidemic patient during treatment with niacin. Niacin lower plasma level of both cholesterol and triacylglycerol. Therefore, it is particularly useful in treatment of familiar hyperlipidemia. Niacin is also used to treat other severe hypercholesterolemia, often in combination with other anti-hyperlipidemic agents. In addition, it is most potent anti-hypolipidemic anti agent for raising plasma HDL level, which is the most common indication for its clinical use. The most common side effects of niacin therapy are an intense cutaneous flush and pruritus. Final fibrate and Gemfibrozil are derivative of fibric acid that lower serum triacylglycerol and increase HDL level. Both have the same mechanism of action. However, fibrofibrate, fibrofibrate is more effective than gemfibrozil in lowering plasma LDL cholesterol and triglyceride levels. The perisosome Peroxisome proliferator activated receptor are member of nuclear receptor supergene family that regulate lipid metabolism.
PPAR regulates gene, the gene expression encoding for protein involved in lipoprotein structure and function. Fiber mediated gene expression ultimately lead to decrease in triacylglycerol concentration by increasing the expression of lipoprotein lipase and decreasing apoprotein C2 concentration. The most common adverse effect are mild gastrointestinal disturbances. This lessen as the therapy progresses. Because this drug increases biliary cholesterol excretion, there is a predisposition to a formation of goldstone. Myositis inflammation of a voluntary muscle can occur with both drugs, and muscle weakness and tenderness should be evaluated. Biacid secretion have a significant LDL cholesterol lowering effect, although the benefits are less than those absorbed with statin. Cholestyramine and cholestipol are anion exchange resin that bind negative charge bile acid and bile salt in the small intestine. The resin and bile acid complex is excreted in feces, thus preventing the bile acid from returning to the liver by enteral hepatic circulation. Lowering the bile acid concentration causes hepatocyte to increase conversion of cholesterol to bile acid, resulting in a replenished supply of this compound, which is an essential component of the bowel. Consequently, the intracellular cholesterol concentration decreases, which activates an increased hepatic uptake cholesterol containing LDL particle, leading to a fall in plasma LDL. Cholesterol Tyramine cholesterol are taken orally because they are insoluble in water and are very large. They are neither absorbed nor metabolically altered by the intestine. Instead, they are totally excreted in feces. The most common side effects are GI disturbance such as constipation, nausea, and flatulence. At high doses, tyramine and cholesterol impair the absorption of fat-soluble vitamin A, D, E, K. Ezetimide selectively inhibits absorption of dietary and biliary cholesterol in small intestine, leading to a decrease in the delivery of intestinal cholesterol to the liver. This causes a reduction of hepatic cholesterol store and an increase in clearance of cholesterol from the blood. It is often necessary to use two anti-hyperlipid epidemic drug to achieve treatment goal in plasma lipid level. For example, a type 2 hyperlipidemia patient are commonly treated with a combination of niacin plus the bile acid binding agent such as cholestyramine. Simvastatin and ezetimibe, as well as simvastatin and niacin are currently available combined in one pill to treat elevated LDL cholesterol. This week I'll summarize some action on anti-hypolipidemic uh, drugs. This is a treatment guideline for hyperlipidemia. Note that diet and exercise are integral of all treatment of hyperlipidemia. That's it.